Good evening, folks. It's LaRon on a check-in. Welcome to the JSN show. JSN Live. Really excited, man. I want to take my time. If you haven't uh, already, definitely hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also hit that notification bell uh, so you can see when my videos are coming out. Definitely hit that like button right now. Hit that like, 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 like. Yes. Back with another show. Oh, man, I'm ready to go in today, man. I just get some things off my chest. Did you watch that fight this past weekend? Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury. I got a couple things to say. Now, I'm probably going to be by myself. I don't have my co-host, if you will, but... We're going to keep on rocking. All right. Uh, put this, uh, put my cash up up there. I appreciate the super chats. Um, I want to give a shout out to Swanee for giving me a, a super chat. Yes, yes, Swanee. Definitely uh, appreciate you supporting the show. Also, I want to give a shout out to William A. Thomas for the super chat as well. Also, Daria Woods. We appreciate the love, the super chats. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All too kind. Uh, real, you know, I'm probably touch on it real quick. I'm not gonna uh, keep the keep you long, but I want to talk about NFL coach John Gruden resigned as a Los Angeles Raiders head coach. Did you see that stuff going on right there? Did you see it? Hold on one second. Let me um, fix the camera here. Oh, man. I got to move my light. I see my light. Now it's a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? John John Gruden just started getting his, his groove. You know, he was getting his players. I really don't believe he should have got that job anyway. This dude was out of football, and then he ended up getting a $100 million contract. Ten years. Where they do that at? You have all these up and coming uh, African American head coaches. You have what the league is like ninety percent black, maybe between eighty to ninety percent. I might be up stretching the the statistics, but and and can't get uh black coaches. But anyway, that's one thing. Also. Yes, I definitely got to talk about Deontay Wilder. That was a, wasn't that a great fight? Oh, my gosh, that was such a good fight. Man, the boxing needed that. See, I'm a UFC fan. I watch that every week because every fight, every match is good. Boxing kind of fell off to me. I'm not a huge uh, boxing fan with especially the heavyweight division. Um, I don't like the fact that they don't fight each other when they should fight. They're holding out. And, mm, I can, and then when they get in the ring, they dance. They're not really punching each other. But this fight right here, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Also, uh, Kyrie Irving. He won't play. I'm not going to say he won't play, but he will not play. Uh, the Nets organization basically said that I'm not going to say the word because we can't say that, but uh, he's not going to take. So they basically said he can't play until he. What do you think about that? Leave it in the comments. Let me know how you feel about that. But let's get started. I'll start my talk my talk, if you will. Gotta talk my talk. Yeah. So anyway, like my hat man. Trying to get my hat game up. Yeah. Gotta rep represent. But anyway. 
when do we get or when did we get so weak as a people see growing up i used to hear sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me i'm pretty sure you heard that as well growing up we all received our fair share of insults by peers family members friends and co-workers now the public looked at athletes as if they are the toughest and strongest humans on the planet anyone who played sports in their youth before the feminist movement took over social media they know you know that you had to be tough playing sports you know coaches would yell at you all the time I remember uh, watching uh, people get their the, the coach grabbing their helmets, spitting in their face by accident, breath staking. All through practice. There were aggressive coaches like Bobby Knight, Tom Landry, uh, Jimmy Johnson, with the aggressive coaching style that made players tougher on the field. I remember that you had no room to complain i remember i was watching a reading a book um it was boys will be boys and it was a uh, about the the cowboys back in the 80s late 80s and it was this guy who was running but he wasn't running to his full capacity and he uh had asthma so he stopped and jimmy johnson looked at him and said hey why are you stopping he said i got asthma he said that the asthma field is over there. You're cut. You just cut them right there. That was the culture. The culture inside the locker room was the same. The stars of the team would talk negatively about a player in front of other peers to embarrass him. The term that we call hazing. Hazing is humiliating and sometimes dangerous. Initiation rituals especially as those um, imposed on college students seeking membership or fraternity sorority I had a conversation with another African American and we and I'm not going to say his name in regards to disrespecting each other in front of others in the black community because you know that goes on all the time that's how we talk in the community you know he said something that was alarming to me he said in our culture that's something we just do and it should make you tougher although I did not like the comments that he said to me he was right I don't think African Americans should tear each other down because it lowers your self esteem we live in a world where everyone wants to be accepted by their peers destroying someone verbally on their appearance family education geographic location is wrong but we also live in a world where you have freedom of speech ever since the lgbtq community started using cancel culture uh, strategies to gain rights many people started losing their careers which i think is wrong for something they tweeted 10, 15 years ago. It showed me that they will forgive some people and not others. See, Joe Biden was forgiven by uh, the black community for his racist statements and policies that targeted black people allegedly in the black communities. Now, Hillary Clinton was also forgiven after calling African Americans super predators. Now John Gruden has announced his resignation as coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Now these are old emails 
and it were revealed he uh, frequently used misogynist, racist, and homophobic language, which, while discussing the leak, the email content of which were published by the New York Times on Monday became public after Gruden apologized for the, <clears throat> excuse me, the different emails that categorized the players, union leaders via racial tropes. The Raiders fell to the Chicago Bears on Sunday and Gruden resigned during Monday night football. The broadcast he appeared on at ESPN for nine years, including the years he sent the emails. Gruden's behavior recently came under scrutiny when the Wall Street Journal uncovered an email he sent in 2011 in which he used a racial trope to describe NFL Players Association Executive Director Demarcus Smith. The email sent to former NFL General Manager Bruce Allen. It came to light as part of the league's investigation into the Washington football team, which concluded this summer. Now, I'm pretty sure that these teams already had the emails. So my question is, why now? Why did you put it out now? Now, Gruden used a homophobic term in the email, which um, referring to St. Louis um, player Michael Sam. Do y'all remember him? He was the first openly gay defensive end in 2014 draft. Now, Sam did not respond directly, but used the prayer emoji and users on Twitter who thanked him for his bravery on National Coming Out Day. After the Wall Street Journal report on Gruden's comments about Sam Smith came out on October 8th, Raiders owner Mark Davis said in a statement that he found it disturbing and not what the Raiders stand for. Now, comedians and pastors are the last group that has freedom of speech. And they are losing those positions fast. Comedian Dave Chappelle always show heroics throughout his career. While he bashed comedy style all the time, he talks about a lot of people. Now, his style also breathes truth and it's a breath of fresh air to most but some would like to see him get cancelled his new Netflix special The Closer shined a light on a cancel culture with the feminist and LBGTQ community now the LBGTQ community went to social media asking for Netflix to stop streaming the controversial comedy special. Dave Chappelle stated that this will be his last special for a while. He strategically made five comedy specials for the uh, Netflix that pushed the narrative of freedom of speech, in my opinion. Where are we going with this? There's, most people are right now celebrating the fact that John Gruden is fired. Now, I'm. it's interesting to me because most people are pissed off because of the tweets that he, uh, basically one guy allegedly, um, I forgot the guy's name, but he said his lips are big, really, really big and whatever. And he did not get fired. People should be uh, alarmed at that because the only way John Gruden got fired is because he talked about gay people. Isn't that what Dave Chappelle talked about in his special? Crazy timing, right? Everything stops when you talk about the gay community. 
and people don't want to hear this out. I mean, if you can care, you don't care, but all this transpired when Obama got in office. What they say, he was the first gay president. He put laws in place for this. And, you know, obviously, they, I believe they were investigating. Um, I forgot what they were investigating. I don't, let me let me pull it up real fast. Why this all even came about. Okay, according to the New York Times. Let me see here. Okay, so it said probes, probes was launched. After Washington Redskins reported allegations from 40 women who said uh, they were harassed and verbally abused as team employees. So they've been investigating. And what they uncovered is 650,000 emails. And, you know, John Gruden was a uh, close friend with uh, Bruce. Bruce Allen. Now, Bruce Allen used to be an employee for Washington football team. It's so crazy. Like, this this is getting out of control. Washington Redskins don't even have a name because they said that was racist. Most Indians didn't even care about that. The uh, real na Native Americans, but they took it off, whatever. And this guy is talking amongst his friend. Now, we all know or talked about under closed doors certain things that's very controversial. But it's just so funny when it gets to the public, we we act like we have amnesia, like, oh well, why would you do such a thing? Everybody have a friend, best friend that they talk to behind closed doors about something. But whatever. People saying they don't like John John Gruden and you got people like um, Randy Moss. I'm going to try to pull it up, but he's sitting there crying on TV. Now, first of all, stop these black men. Oh, man, they're so soft, man. First off, you should never let an, another man make you cry. Weak. Now, I remember Jason Whitlock was saying recently uh, the same thing that I'm saying. And he was like, how can you let um, another man use words to make you tear up? And I'm going to play, I'm trying to play the video, but a lot of these tough NFL players who've been playing tough football, like football is one of the most toughest sports in the league, in my opinion, or in the world, opposed to boxing. Put your life on the line. A lot of people getting uh, CTE and they're losing their life and all these things. Like these are the toughest players in the world. But weak minded, man. Yes, physically, you could probably beat any, you know, beat a lot of the people up. You're an athlete, you know? And it's, and it's so interesting when Jason Whitlock said something and he said this. He said, why are you crying when you're dealing with a white man saying something, but you're, if a black man say something about you, you want to end his life or you want to beat him up. So guess what? Your boy tweeted. He tweeted. Randy Moss tweeted, said, it's on site when I see you. Wow. Can you, can you believe that? Freedom of speech is done. It's done. I mean, let me ask, did we ever have freedom of speech? I guess not. But I'm going to try to, uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Uh, give me a second here. Well, I'll pull it up in a minute, but. You know, you got people like uh, Ryan Clark crying, talking about, oh, man, <laughs> you know, some somebody called my, my son a nigger in the car. I should have said that word, but, you know, the N-word. And 
and you whining and crying. Like, can we toughen up as a community? And then you have these women on the show crying like, I know your pain. I know how much it could be. How can it be in the in the locker room? Man, the world is done, man. We are soft as a people, man. You know, it's, it's just wild, man, because, you know, when you have tough people before you come in this world, you know, in the, in the, um, the baby boomer generation, we had people standing up for our rights and losing their job and losing their careers like Muhammad Ali. That's why I respect Muhammad Ali. Because he stood what he, he stood for what he believed in. He didn't care. Back in the day, they said, give me liberty or give me death. But we just a crying community. We always want to cancel somebody. Cancel them. The only it seemed like the only people who accomplishing this cancel culture is the feminists. They getting people fired. And the LGBTQ. Black skin. <laughs> I ain't see a black person cancel anybody yet. Maybe you can put that in my um in the in the comments, but I haven't seen it. I remember uh Nick Cannon. He got canceled for talking about Jews. They canceled him. Like them Jews, see, <laughs> it's crazy because six companies own 90% of the media, man. Disney own everything. I think Disney own Fox News. Disney no <laughs> Disney owns ABC. <laughs> you go across the country, all the music stations sound the same. The same shows. Like if you watch Steve Harvey at six o'clock in, in, in the north, it's on six o'clock in the south. We are robots right now. I just can't believe it. I mean, I'm seeing it, you know. And right now, you can't have your own mind. It is crazy. That's why I stopped watching sports channels. I used to love watching sports when you can have your own different opinions, but now you can't say anything different than the what they uh, Kwame says the go along, get along game. You can't say anything different than what they think. It's like Stepford Wives. It's like Everybody got to think this way or you're canceled. Do you see where we're going in this country? You don't have to like everybody. I don't like the fact that, see, a lot of people don't understand. If you, no matter if you agree with the situation or not, it's called rules of engagement. If you go, if you go this far, they're going to go this far. And there's going to be something, because you got to remember Every two to four years, maybe even eight, there's going to be a change in government. Because people get get fed up and they're going to go so far to the other side. That's what they do. They did it since, I mean, just go back to Carter. Carter had it. He was a Democrat four years. And then we were going through a um, depression. Recession or recession. Then everybody said, look, we got to get him out of there. Reagan came up here and said, let's make America great again. That was his slogan before Trump did it. Then there was prosperity with certain groups. Not all groups, but certain groups, it was prosperity. On the flip side, there was a a lot of um, drugs. There was a um, say no to drugs campaign, but the same token on, um, on Reagan's second term, they did the Contra War where they dropped drugs, allegedly, dropped drugs and and weapons all through the communities. I mean, I believe uh, the real Rick Ross, Freeway Ricky Ross, said the same thing. So they wanted to change. Then 92, Clinton comes in. He had his little eight terms and they switched around. And But this is what's going on, man. So you have to watch what you do and what you say because eventually the other side is going to have it and they're going to try to mandate certain things as well. You don't want to mandate stuff. You want to give people a free choice to do it. 
and we should also we should always have a freedom of speech as long as we don't you know um what the what the who who said this i think it was in one of um dave Chappelle's specials he said we have the first amendment you can say what you want, but I got a second amendment to defend myself. What a lovely parallel, isn't that? And and I'm just I'm just over this. We can't do or say what we want. It's a mess. So I don't know. I think African Americans should be more upset the fact that if cuz I don't I don't think he should have got fired that's just my opinion. His emails years ago and you forced him to resign you know saying that we don't first off he was not with this organization when he was doing this. He was with ESPN when he was talking the way he talked. And like I said, anybody on here knows that you said a lot of lot worse things about people when you're talking amongst your friends. We live this facade like you can't be who you want, you know, who you really are. So many people talk about women, talk about black, white, other. That's what people do. And if they want to lie, go to any barber shop. Across the United States, go to any locker room. That's what they talk about. Go to a bachelorette party. I don't know why we we fooling ourselves. Like we can't even be real. Everything's so offensive. But in my opinion, this world's getting real soft. Sports is getting soft. You messing up a good thing. The the, the ratings are low anyway. People are not watching sports like they used to. They're not watching sports like they used to. So, <laughs> and he's not the only emails on there. I'm pretty sure there's other players who's doing the same thing, and they're all going to come out. Like, how are you going to get mad at? Well, first off, social media is a new thing. And I said this on one of my videos. Shout out to the people who who uh, watch my videos. I take a lot of work, and I appreciate it, man. So thank you. But I used to be, when I was a, a kid, you know, I used to want to watch X-Men. And all these sports, when I was having a conversation with my my friend, shout out to uh, my boy Chaz. But I was having a conversation with him. And I'm like, I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to read people's minds. And I heard Drake say this uh, a couple years ago. I was like, man, that would be a great superpower. I wanted to be like Wolverine and all these other people like that. Until social media came out, all you scroll down, it's like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to hear. <laughs> turn it off. Turn it off. You know, you want to turn your app off because you're tired of hearing people's thoughts. <laughs> I didn't even know you think like this. I don't even want to know anymore. Like a, like a Professor Xavier, like you just want to go crazy. That's how I feel right now. But you have a right to do it. I just have a right to turn it off. That's what I'm saying. Don't come on my page. Don't come on my Facebook page and, and tell me what you feel on, on my stuff. Like you're offended. Keep scrolling. I'm so sick of that. Oh my God. That's how I feel about it, man. You have a right to do what you do. I have a right to do what I do. That's a, That's the America dream. Like America started what? 1776. This is this never been done before. Prior to America starting like this, where they gave the power to the people and they got fed up with the British. Shout out to Robert Morris for giving them the money to uh, fight this and get this 
situation like it is. But before that, there was all kings. There was all dictators. This is the first country that did it. That's why we're the, the fastest country to grow that fast. Because when you give the, the power to the people, this is what happens. We become innovators. We make money and products and stuff like that. So, you know, this is the only country that you could come here, one of the only countries, that you could come here and, and go for your dreams. No other country you can do that. It's fast. And we're messing it up. Because we, we're so offensive. We're, we're offended at everything. Like, that's a woman's trait. Like, my grandfather and my father wasn't, a, uh, wasn't like this. It was tough. They tried to teach us to be tough. And one of the biggest mistakes, and this is just my opinion, and we're going to talk about it, but this is the, one of the biggest mistakes was in 1964 with the black community, uh, there was a there was a report called the uh, Monaghan Report, and Mo- uh, I forgot the guy's first name, but you can look it up. Monaghan did a report, and he said uh, they were trying to strengthen the black men, and the Democrats ran the house. LBJ was in uh, office, and they declined to do that. And so they they chose to empower black women instead. And they gave them incentives to get the man out the house for benefits. Isn't that crazy? So there's been a war in the black um in the African American household since then. You know, and um, we 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 just have excuse me, we just got really soft, man. And that's that's a problem for me. We we can't can't say nothing to anybody. I used to growing up, you know, you had to, you know, obviously you don't want nobody talking about you as different things like that, but that make you tougher, man. I make you tougher. Tough people create great times. Great times create weak people on the next generation. Straight up. So, you know, this, this, uh, how many people watch that fight? Deontay Wilder. Now, Ah, man, like I said, on the weekends, my wife and I, we became avid uh, fight watchers, if you will, but we don't really watch boxing. We we stick to the UFC because, man, man, shout out to Dana White. That dude, he's a dictator, but those fights are good. Great. Like every fight, every every fight is good. But I, I have a bone to pick with this fight. And now, you can check my, out my last video. I did a pre-fight um, video, and my predictions were right. You can check it out, but I'll talk about it anyway. Most people who don't even have to watch boxing just watch the last two fights, and most people picked uh, Tyson Fury to win. Now, Deontay, I feel like he messed up the bag over his pride. He messed it up because if I was him, first off, after he tied him, I wouldn't have fought him again. I wouldn't have fought Tyson Fury again. That first match was an epic match. I was really entertained with that first match. Deontay was losing the whole fight. And then he had that equalizer that he has, that that punch. Now, a lot of people say uh, Deontay Wilder is one-dimensional. Let me get a sip. Fighting 400 steel fighting to this day. To this day. To this day, he was a one-dimensional fighter. He got that one pan. 
Um, he don't his defense is not really that good, but he fought. What prior to fighting uh, Tyson Fury, he fought forty two times, knocked out what forty one. Impressive. Got to give him a shout out to that. <laughs> now Deontay, he he gave the people what they want because we had the most boring fighters who had the uh, championship for years with Klitschko. Punch and hold, punch and hold, the whole dang on time. That was like the worst heavyweight uh, as far as entertainment in history. I remember Mike Tyson used to say, you know, the heavyweight championship is like the baddest man on the planet, and, we, and you can pretty much beat anybody in a fight, a one-on-one fight. You could be the lightweight, middleweight, because you're the big heavyweight. Custom model used to tell him that. And Deontay Wilder should not have taken that fight. He should have moved on. Right? He should have went and fought Joshua, Anthony Joshua, which I don't even think, I think Anthony was ducking him too. We need to unify this belt. There's too many belts in boxing there's like what 57 um championship belts how do you have that many belts corrupt corruption if you will and then you know Dante, uh excuse me Deontay Wilder went to the second fight he went to the second fight And I was nervous for uh, Tyson Fury. Now, I, I became a fan of Tyson Fury after that first fight. I didn't know of him. But when I watched that first fight and I saw how he was slipping punches when they were in the pocket, he was slipping and, and, and countering. I'm like, this big, tall guy got skills. But he's fat as all get out. He's fat. Right? But when I saw him, his skills, and then we all know when he got up, it looked like the Undertaker because Wilder knocked him the heck out. And he was kissing to the crowd and stuff, and, you know, he was out. And then when dude popped up, the look on Wilder's face was priceless. He's like, wow, like, this never happened. He looked like he was dead, dead. And he gets up. And I watched that fight over and over again. And it's crazy because he had new life. So he started charging Wilder in that 12th round of that first fight and noticed something. He noticed that Wilder couldn't fight going backwards. Because if you look at his fights, he's always going forward. And he noticed it. So, shout out to uh, Wilder. I mean, shout out to Fury. He ended up like, huh. Then he went and got a new trainer. He fired his trainer because he's never known as a knockout artist. He usually go a lot of his fights, he goes to 12th round. And a lot of his fights that people don't understand that he actually got knocked down a lot of times. There's something about somebody getting knocked down early in their career that changes their life. They, you learn how to get through stuff early. You know what I mean? The worst thing that can happen to you is you, you uh, finally start losing later on in life. Like Mike Tyson, people don't know this, but Mike Tyson said on his podcast that he used to get knocked out all the time in amateurs. He didn't even make it to the Olympics. He was on like the B team in case somebody got hurt because he uh he lost. But in that process he was learning how to deal with adversity. Boom, perfect timing. Shout out to Tyson. One of the favorite my favorite uh Fighters and per, um, people out here. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, in that second fight, he ended up getting Sugar Hill. 
is a trainer. Let me pull up here some real quick. Hold on one second. Yeah. So he ended up getting uh, Sugar Hill, which is uh, used to be a former police officer. Mm -hmm. Now, people don't notice. Some people, um, all the boxing fans notice, but um, oh, I got to sneeze. Hold on, give me a second. Mm -mm. Hold on. Hold on one second here. Bet, yeah, but um, people don't know this, but Sugar Hill was under he's a uh, family members with um, Emmanuel Stewart, and they have a serious camp up there. And um, I watched the interview with uh, Sh Sugar Hill basically talking about you know, um how he got a chance to be under um, and living with Emmanuel Stewart for like 30 years. So he knows that, you know, he learned a lot of stuff that Emmanuel Stewart taught. And um, I think it's called Crunk Gym in Detroit. There's a lot of good fighters out there. It was led by uh, Emmanuel Stewart. It was run out of a basement. You know, you know, anytime you go in the basement, some some good stuff happening in, in them hoods, man. You ever watch that one? Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody watched Rocky Three when uh, Rocky was losing. He didn't have any confidence, and Creed took him back to the hood, and that's how he learned how to beat uh, Clever Lane. What a what a great movie! But so many people came from Crunk Jim. Like Thomas the Hitman Hearns came out of there. Real champion. Amazing. So he became a tra his trainer, Tyson Fury. And he said, he's like, in, in press conference, I, didn't, I don't know, I, I, I didn't believe him. Most people didn't believe him. I didn't think he would knock him out, but he said he's going to knock uh, Wilder out. I had to put respect on Fury's name because this dude is really good. He's been boxing since he was 10 years old. There was an interview I watched recently. He was like, you know, mate. He didn't say mate. That was that Australia. I don't know. <laughs> but he was like, I've, I've been training in me gym when everybody would go out to eat and go out to party and drink, and I would work and it shows and um yeah so Breland was Deontay Wilder's trainer right and Breland did the right thing in my opinion because Deontay was getting beat down in that fight. He was punch drunk. There was something, like, there's something wrong with his head, man. Just like a dent in his head. Like, right on the left side. And I saw it on both fights. 
the second fight and the third fight. Now, hold on one second here. Okay, I'm back here. Yeah. So Deontay had all these excuses after getting knocked out. Like he looked, he was very like outclassed. And then he started looking punch drunk. One thing I say about boxers, and you never know when it's gonna happen. The day when they start getting looking punch drunk, and it could be a hit, one hit or a multiple hits. I believe uh don't quote me on it, but I think Floyd, not Floyd Mayweather, Muhammad Ali took about 200,000 punches to the head. And shout out to my, my one boy, uh, Will, Will Rose. He was saying that, uh, you know, after he had that layoff due to um, dodging the draft and then he fought it in the Supreme Court, I think it was out of, out of the league for three years out of uh, boxing. He looks a little slower coming back. And he said after that third fight with Frazier, he should have retired when they was about, he felt like he was going to die. And I think it was that year. They were fighting 15 rounds and somebody was going to die in that ring. And I believe Frazier's people stopped it because Frazier didn't want to get up, I think. Quote me, put put uh, in the comment if you know what I'm talking about. So there's a, it could be a punch. Something happens. Like Roy Jones Jr. Tarver punched him so hard, knocked him out. This is the first time he ever get knocked out. Roy Jones never been the same since. He was fighting like. He got knocked out like twice in a row. And then all of a sudden, he just started getting knocked out like cold. He'd never been the same. Antonio Tarver, he's another one where, you know, sometimes his speech is slurred. A lot of boxers are like that. And honestly, I think. Deontay Wilder is getting to that point. He did not look comfortable in that ring. Not at all. Now, I'm going to play. I'm going to try to find this video real quick. But um, one moment here. I want to look, show you his training. Deontay. One moment here, let me find it. All right, here we go. Here, let me, let me make sure it's that's right. All right, so I'm going to turn the sound off and stuff, but uh, this is the training he was doing with uh, Malik Scott. Let me pull this up here. All right, here we go. So here's the training with Malik Scott right here. Now he look good when you're hitting pads. That's whole different. Totally different. All right, so look 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 at the movement. He was fast right there, right? And that was their strategy. Strategy was going to the body. Let me go back here. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. 
ducking. Boom, boom, boom. You see what I'm saying? That was the strategy. Go to the body. Now, it was a smart move because, I mean, come on now. Everybody saw uh, <laughs> oh, um, Tyson Fury looking like a bag of potatoes. Potato salad, like my man say. Gut was all messed up. And so the first two rounds, the first two rounds, he was going to the body. He was looking sharp, too. He's moving around. Getting him the body. Bang. Bang, bang, bang. Won the first, uh, he won the first round, lost the second. But one thing about Wilder, he is not coachable. It's hard to train someone who knocked out 42 out of 43 people. You can't teach them new tricks. He was not listening to his coach, but Tyson Fury was. Now, in my opinion, Deontay Wilder should have won that fight. By sixth round, he was winning the fight. He was winning the whole fight from six rounds. He knocked Tyson Fury out twice in one round. And obviously, Fury got saved by the round. He got knocked down in the third, got caught slipping. Because Deontay Wilder does not put his guard up. He's looking to hit that, what uh, Teddy Alex like to say, the equalizer. So he's just waiting for that one punch. So easy to read, but if and um, Tyson got caught slipping, like I said, in the third round because he got too comfortable. He wasn't putting his guard up. And Deontay Wilder knocked him out on the first um, knockdown going backwards. And that's a weakness of his, but he, he went back and bam, hit him right, right here. I messed him up. So like I said, from the sixth round on, he was winning. And then he stopped listening. The worst thing in the world is when you are tired, you lose all discipline. You you actually decide to quit in your mind. So he was tired. Now, his, Breland, his old coach, he said he is hard to coach. Like he said, when you go into the gym, it's hard to even, you don't know his moods. So you can't tell him anything. He said he never did jump rope. He never really ran. So his strategy was like, all right, well, we're going to lift weights and we're going to bulk up. So he bulked up to what? His weight was like 339 or something like that. He bulked up. But like I was telling people on my last video, when you bulk up, that means you're going to have to use more oxygen for your muscles. He's not naturally that big. You're thinking you're going to hold somebody off you. Hey, he talking about he could bench 350 pounds, but bro, you only could do it what between one time and maybe 10. You got 36 minutes, this dude who's 277 pounds just putting his body weight on you. Yes, you're going to give in. Your body's going to give in. And then what I didn't like or what Deontay Wilder did is he threw too many power punches. I heard Lennox Lewis say in the beginning of the fight, Stop throwing those power punches in the beginning because it's going to tire you out, especially when you miss. And he was missing. Man. Deontay Wilder reminded me of somebody on Mike Tyson's punch out, especially when he got tired. He was just like, hmm. And once you throw that power punch, Tyson hit him like four times, like pop, 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 pop. It was so predictable. But if he would have stayed with the, the concept of going to the body, Tyson didn't know what to do. He was fragile. Also, Tyson did not train hard. Tyson has mental issues. And it's sad, but it's true. He was not always fat. He was not always that big. He stopped for whatever reason. He didn't. He wanted to kill himself. He didn't care about anything. And like I, I tell people, I think Wilder needed Fury and Fury needed Wilder. 
you know, like Joker. Joker needed Batman. Batman needed Joker. Like they need each other. Frazier needed Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali needed Frazier. Larry Bird needed Magic Johnson, and J- Magic Johnson needed him. Let me explain. Deontay Wilder was knocking everybody out. He wanted challenges. He he. One thing I have to put respect on his name is he fights whoever's in front of him. Tyson Fury wanted to kill himself. He won the championship against Klitschko. Beat him down. Thank God he beat him down and got him rid of, got him out the freaking league because he was so boring. Oh my God. So boring. After that, he starts spazzing out with this mental health issue, wearing Batman suits to stuff and talking to people erratically and crazy. And then one day he said he was driving. He was going 120 in a, an expensive vehicle. And he was going to smash himself like a Coke bottle can. And something told him, thank, thank God, something told him, which was God, don't do it. You got kids. You got a family that need you. And at this point, he was 400 pounds. Then he heard Deontay Wilder on an interview saying he could beat Fury. Fury's a bum. He quit and all this other stuff. So Tyson said, hey, I'm going to get back in shape and beat him down. So he lost all that weight and didn't even take a tune-up fight. I've been out of boxing for two and a half years. It came in there and pretty much tied Deontay Wilder. It was a tie. So he said to himself, if I had come back after all this weight and depression and, and this is what happened, once I get in shape, I'm going to beat the crap out of you. And they happened. Now, second fight. Deontay Wilder lose. He's mad at everybody. Because he never experienced losing before. Sometimes you got to lose early. You got to lose, man. Life is about losing. That's how you learn. You can't win. You can't learn by winning. Who want to look at their flaws when they're winning? He's always was winning. He didn't want to learn boxing. They wouldn't, he, he didn't want to learn it because he didn't have to. That's the problem I have with top athletes. Deontay Wilder was an athlete. He used to play football. Like Top athletes don't have to do that. In their mind. So Deontay Wilder, man, he didn't learn the sweet science of boxing. He started late. You know, he, he had a sense of urgency because his uh, daughter was sick or something. He needed the money. And he went in there and went up the ranks real fast. Uh, shout out to him because he did entertain us for years, you know, with the knockouts. But we come for the knockouts. Michael Vick is another one. Michael Vick never learned the sweet science of being a quarterback. I don't think Cam Newton did either. Shout out to Lamar. I think he is. Maybe he's learning from other people's mistakes. But most of these players do not learn the game because they don't have to they could just go in there and just freestyle but then when your career starts slowing down you can't do it anymore because someone's going to figure you out and you slow it down we all know that Deontay Wilder is not the same fighter even though he never had skills something's wrong with him he's like looking all like something something's wrong with him man and he's willing to down the shield so you fire Breland. You get this new um, coach, uh, Malik Scott. We we saw him on there. Now Malik Scott was a former boxer. Did anybody know that Malik Scott fought Deontay Wilder and got knocked out in the first round? Anybody know that? 
he lost to all the top fighters. I mean, he he had a decent record. It was thirty eight and three and one. But looking at um the people he fought, he I don't believe he fought anybody to be honest, other than um and the, and the people he fought that um up in ranks he lost to. So he uh, Deontay Wilder beat him in the first round. I'll try to play that video if I can. Um, then he lost to um before that he lost to Derek Chisora in London. And that was the sixth round. And then he lost to uh, Luis Ortiz. They went to the uh, decision. That was his last fight. And Tyson Fury said, he's like, "What? why are you training him? You're not going to teach him any way to beat me because I beat you in the boxing sparring. I, I beat the crap out of you. That's what he said. So, But I will say this. Malik Scott did a good job, but I... Man, I watched an interview with him after the fight, and Malik is a straight yes man. I don't think Deontay needed a yes man. I'm like watching this crappy video. He's like, oh, man, I'm just so thankful he gave me an opportunity, and I love that guy. I was like, man, come on, man. He needs, he don't need a yes man. See, Brilliant ain't even talk. They ain't even meet after, after the, um, being in the ring. He was your trainer. See, I don't believe you could be friends with people that you have to kind of boss around, if you will. That's why when you work at a job, you shouldn't be friends with your supervisor or vice versa. Because it's going to be hard to tell that person what to do when they need to do it. It's impossible. Real quick, let me see if I can find that fight real fast. Why would you pick him as your? I I don't know. Let me let me um. See if I get this fight up. All right, here we go. I'm pull that right here. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. All right. Turn the sound off, but look, look at this. Look at Deontay, one trick pony. I mean, he's using his jab in his fight a little bit. But when you fight Deontay, you got to get him. Ooh, man, did you see that punch? Look at back here. Man. See, right here, you can't stay stagnant when you're fighting now, Deontay Router. You got to move, man. He's six foot seven. And if you're in the pocket, Look at him. That's his trainer. Is that your king? Look at this. Why are you standing there? He's setting you up. One, two. That's his favorite. Man. Mm -hmm. Let me go back here. You got to move around. What you standing there for? He's trying to set you up with that jab right there. Not moving your head. He cutting the ring off. Look at that. And, and if you look at um Wilder, he, he don't have good foot movement. Man, you're going to stand there. I got to go back. You got to move when you're fighting him, man. Move that head. Everything got to be moving. Oh. So 
So, you know, Tyson Fury said he was a bum, bum fighter. Anyway. I, you know, what's next for uh, Tyson? That's the question. You know, he wants to fight. Who's that guy? Um, if you're watching this um, in the comments, that Dylan. I forgot his name. Dylan. Man. It's going to haunt me right now if I don't get his name real quick. I know he fought Anthony Joshua before, but um, I think he's like ranked number three in the, in the league. Anthony. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Dylan White. Who is Dylan White? I never watched him box, but I heard he, he's a pretty good boxer. And I heard he's up, what, 30, 30 wins, two losses. And I know he's a pretty pretty high rank. I know he's at least top five. Guy from, I think he's from the, he's born in Jamaica. But anyway, um, there was rumors that Tyson Fury sparred him, and Tyson got knocked down a few times messing with him. Now, Anthony Joshua, he's a good boxer as well, but I, I just think his mental is messed up right now, and he's being exposed. Um, Yeah, but anyway, let me go here. But again, I appreciate the, uh, again, the super chats. Um, Also, like I said, I want to give a shout-out to Swanee for the super chat. Also, uh, William A. Thomas, and appreciate all the cash apps. Yep, yep. Now, um, I'm not going to stay on this long, but what you think about um, Kyrie Irving? Leave him in the comments. Do you think he should retire? Do you think the Brooklyn Nets is going to retire? I mean, excuse me, um, Brooklyn Nets is going to trade him. What do you think? But us no um it's a shame that they're doing this in the league you know but um i believe that they have the right to do what they want to do with their employees you know it, and Kyrie has a right to do what he wants to do you know he he's fortunately he's in a position where he can retire and be good for the rest of his life you know i do think we need more people to uh fight for what they want to do and what they believe in because this is america you have a choice you should not be forced to do something that you don't want to do in my opinion that's why we do as americans have to position ourselves to not need other people now the sad thing is that most people are losing their jobs and it's very hard to get a job these days maybe not now because of covid but maybe so because you know, there's so many things that they're demanding, which I'm not going to get into. Um, and they're making that choice. Like, basically, if you don't do something, you're not going to be able to work for some people to do it. So, uh, for me, I believe that Kyrie Irving should do whatever he wants to do and any other player in that league. I don't think you should be forced to do something like that. But most people are like that get kicked out the league. You know, look at um back in the day, Craig uh, Craig Hodges. He was he was Muslim. He didn't want to do certain things, so they pretty much kicked him out of the league. Then you had uh, another Muslim, um, Abdul Raouf. I forgot his first name, and he was one of the star players in the league, still getting buckets, and they they got rid of him. So this is probably no different. You know, but we'll see what happens. Um, season's about to start soon. Um, yeah. But um, in closing, you know, I think Deontay Wilder 
should retire from boxing. He did enough for the sport. I I don't want to see him punch drunk where he's doing interviews and they need the caption under it because we don't understand them. I mean, he needs to, to look at the fighters prior to him, like Riddick Bo. Riddick Bo, you can't understand nothing he says. Evander Holyfield's another one. I mean, did you see that horrible fight he fought last, uh, what, a couple weeks ago? Oh, he looks so bad, man. What are you doing? Lost all his money. 58 years old, he looks bad. I mean, you know, his physique is great to keep himself in good shape, but, man, when this goes, ooh, man, he looks really bad. Um, Michael George, I mean, excuse me, Mike Tyson looks good because he didn't. He never really took that many hits. He usually knocked you out in the first round. You know, he won 50 fights. 46 of them was a knockout. He's in good cognitive shape. Deontay need to give it up, man. There's something wrong with his left side of his head. One thing I didn't like about the fight, the end, I didn't like the fact that he did not shake Tyson Fury's hand. This is a sport. And he really believes that Tyson Fury tampered with his gloves and messed them up on that last fight. Now, here's my thing about that. Why didn't you say anything when, when you were fighting? Because if, if I got hit with some something, a hard object, I'm going to stop the fight and say, ref, check his gloves right now. Why didn't you do that? Then you blamed it on the suit. Oh, the suit was heavy. My legs were weak. What happened in this third fight, which it was a fantastic fight, Deontay, don't get me wrong, it was a fantastic fight. But I think they should have stopped that fight before the 11th round, to be honest, because you looked crazy out there. Something was wrong with you. You were just fighting for your life in there, which you should have beat them. You actually had an opportunity to beat them. Then you blame Breland saying he spiked your water. And people believe this. But you know why people believe it? Because all these boxing um, YouTubers, they knew that they could make money off you. Right? They knew they could make money by using your name. So they made up this whole lie and, and came up with these little videos because I know you can alter videos because I edit videos. You could do anything you want. You could change the whole narrative. So these people are zooming in on the gloves and saying all this bull crap. And I don't know if he saw these videos and believed it. But come on. Why would Breland spike your drink when you're paying him and, and your success is his success? That's ridiculous. So he made all these excuses. And then you come to this fight and say, oh, I want to shake your hand. Man, you lost fair and square, bro. That's one thing I like about the UFC, because in the UFC, when they lose, they'll beat each other down. Except for McGregor. McGregor, I mean, he's a great salesman. Shout out to McGregor, man. He was, he was knocked out. I mean, he broke his leg on that last fight, and he's still talking crazy to to, uh, to Poirier. He was like, "Your wife sent your wife sent me, me DMs." I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Well, he know he was selling the fight while he was sitting in the seat, broken leg and all. But I didn't like that about uh, Wilder. I, I like him as a person. Yeah, I think he does a phenomenal. Um, I think he. I don't know him personally, personally, but he seemed like he's a really good dude. But far as like. This situation, I think he's just make up, man. And what's the point of beefing, man? You lost. You lost, man. You got beat down. You know, um, you got enough money. I think you went home on a private jet, according to uh, Malik Scott. Life is good for you, man. You fought, what, 33 rounds and made millions of dollars just from one fight? Just give it up. Now, what I would recommend him um, do 
pre uh previously he, he shouldn't have fought Tyson Fury three times. And if you fought him the second time, you should have took um a couple tune up fights to get your confidence back. You know? So that's my closing remarks on that. Also, uh John Gruden, while he's gone, I, um only thing I would say about that, one of the things is he shouldn't have got that job in the first place. He's he was out of the league. Yeah, a lot of um other qualified uh coaches that could have used that position. When he got the Raiders, he wasn't successful like you thought. And when he went to the Buccaneers, that was Tony excuse me. That was Tony Dungy's team. That's what typically what people do. Like it was Tony Dungy's team. He he uh hired all those players and then they ended up getting John. And um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to see what the former players are saying about him. I know uh one of his players uh what was his name, um, he's on ESPN now. Uh, well, let me pull it up. Somebody called him out recently. Was a receiver. I forgot his name though. Out of my head. He was always a troublemaker anyway. Um, let me see. I'll let you know right now. on top of my head. Crazy. When I was like 20 years ago, man, um, when Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl before. Yes, it was. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson was saying a few nasty words about him. Yeah, they say. Yeah, so Keystone Johnson said he was always a fraud. Hmm. Interesting. So it says uh, he always was a fraud in his ass. On Tuesday, the former NFL wide receiver went off about his former coach who uh, resigned, which we all know. Let me see. He always was a fraud to me from one from day one. He's been a used car salesman, and people bought it, Johnson said on ESPN radio show. And, you know, Johnson played for him for two, um, from 2002 to 2003 as a member of the Buccaneers. Now, also, the pair won a Super Bowl in 2002. Can you believe it? That's almost 20 years ago. Uh, while Johnson said he... Um, he's grateful uh, for Gruden, but um, he said he was a uh, said he was a fraud. See, I don't know about that, man, because most most people, which I'm doing a video about uh, today, actually, uh, most players don't like tough coaches for some reason. But the, the tough coaches get them over the hump. I'll well, talk about that later. But anyway. Definitely hit that cash app, um, share, like the page, and I'll see you later.